In my last video, I showed you how to create a low rank adaptation or LoRa file for Stable Diffusion. These allow you to create unlimited AI images of yourself or pretty much any other person, place, or thing you can think of. Think of it as a way to fine tune a Stable Diffusion model and teach it how to create a specific style or a specific character. The problem a lot of people have is you need a fairly high-end gaming PC or a high-end MacBook Pro. But what if you don't have one of those? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to do it for free using Google Colab. So let's jump right in and get started. Now to start, we're gonna jump over to GitHub and we're gonna to go to Auto Train Advanced. You can see the author right here. Big shout out, thank you so much for taking the time and effort to create this for everyone. Now, when we scroll down here, you can see Auto Train Advanced, there's this sort of readme file you can say deploy on Hugging Space Faces or open in Colab. So we're going to click the open in Colab button. And this is going to open a new tab that has the Google Colab fired up and it has all the code ready to go. And there are a couple of things you need right off the front here. So you need to enter your Hugging Face Write token. So go ahead and click on this. It's going to open another new tab, leaving Colab and going over to Hugging Face. If you don't have a Hugging Face account, don't worry, it's free to sign up. Just enter your Gmail address and you can get started. If you do have one, it's going to take you straight to this Access Tokens section and it's going to show you your existing tokens. If you don't have one, you can just click New, Create One, and be sure to click on Right in the dropdown. And we're going to go ahead and just say this is for a demo. If I can type here, Generate Token, and there you go. Now you can click this little icon over here. That's just the copy button. We'll jump back over and paste that in to the box down here. Don't worry if you can see this, I'm gonna obviously delete this after the fact, but for the sake of this demo, this will work. The next thing you need is an ngrok auth token. So again, click the link. It's gonna leave Colab, take you over to the ngrok site. Same process here. If you don't already have an account, you can create one. Just click on sign up for free and you can sign up with Gmail or with GitHub, any other method you want. And Grok's gonna ask you a couple of questions at the sign up. You can say you're an application developer, but it doesn't matter. All this is just for demographics. And then you're gonna be dropped directly in. Now we can go back and we can get that auth token again. So I'm gonna click that same link in Colab. Now it's gonna take us straight to the dashboard where we can get the token. All you're gonna do is click the copy button. It should automatically have one set up for you. You click copy, and then we're just gonna paste that where it asks for it here. And we've got both of our tokens set up. The next thing we need to do is go to the connect dropdown up here in the upper right. We're gonna click on connect. It's gonna take just a minute. What this does is it's actually connecting to a GPU instance over at Google Colab. The cool thing is it has 15 gigabytes of VRAM. So that's enough for us to actually train a Stable Diffusion XL model. Once that's connected, you're gonna get this little drop down here. It says connected Python 3 to Google Engine, RAM and disk space, everything else you need. Now we can click the play button over here on the auto train. It's gonna give you a warning telling you this wasn't authored by Google, that's fine. Let's go ahead and run it anyway. And this part's gonna take just a minute. What it's doing is it's starting to fire up the Collab Notebook. What I like to do while this is running is click on this show code button. That's just gonna show you what's actually happening behind the scenes. And you can see that right now it's just installing all of the different prerequisites needed for this entire system to run. This is gonna need Python and a whole bunch of other stuff. And so that's gonna take just a couple minutes to get going. All right, so now we've got our auto train public URL down here. You can see right here it says auto train public URL ngrok tunnel. And it gives you this address here. NGROK has actually set up a tunnel in order to get to the local host of this Collab instance, which normally is where the code actually runs. You can see down here, 127.0.0.1, that's the local host address of the Collab machine, but we can't access that because we're not on the same network. So click on this NGROK link, and it's gonna ask you if you wanna visit the site for security reasons, you can click visit site. And this gives us a nice GUI to start with. So you can see a couple things here. Here's your Hugging Face user, all your tech. Here's your project name, hardware, local, that's correct. It's running on the local hardware on their machine. Task, you're gonna to wanna to change this. So by default, it's training a large language model. So you're gonna go into this dropdown and you're gonna select Dream Booth LoRa. And you can see that the base model has changed to Stable Diffusion 1.5. So if you wanted to do a Stable Diffusion 1.5 model or a 2.1 model, you could, but specifically for us, we're gonna go Stable Diffusion XL Base 1.0. That's an SDXL model. You can see over here on the right hand side, these are all the training parameters that it's gonna use. So by default, 
resolutions 1024 it's not going to crop it's doing 500 steps on each image and 500 checkpointing steps so this should be a pretty decent quality result that comes out of this just like you'd get if you were running it locally on your own machine the next thing we need to do is upload training files and to get training files you have a few options you can simply go over to google image search and if you wanted a stable diffusion model trained on Taylor Swift images, you could just do a Google search for Taylor Swift, go over to tools and pick large. You want high resolution images. You want something that doesn't have a crazy background and you don't want a lot of other people in the images. In fact, you just want it to be a high quality image of Taylor Swift or whatever the subject is that you're trying to get. Now, how many images do you need? I would say anywhere between five and 10 is typically enough. I've trained with as few as six and I've trained with as many as 40 before and the results are pretty identical in most cases. Before we click train, we've got a couple of last things to do here. So in the parameters list off on the right, you'll notice the prompt at the top. Now I've gone ahead and replaced the placeholder with Tom Cruise man. That's because I'm training a model of myself. And let me explain this a little bit further. So if you've watched other stable diffusion tips and tricks for Laura's in the past, you've probably heard you should use a random set of characters or something that's unusual as the trigger word or the name that you're going to use in stable diffusion to actually generate the images. That's actually not true. You want something that there are a lot of images already in the base model for so that it knows what that object should look like. So in this case, by saying Tom Cruise man, there are tons of one men in the data set and there are tons of images of Tom Cruise in various poses and doing various things. So it's gonna be a really flexible model if it's trained on something it knows about already. What we need to do is figure out who we look like. In my case, I go over to Google and I do a Google search for celebrity lookalike and the first site that comes up is Star by Face. You can simply upload one of your pictures there and it's gonna tell you which one of the celebrities you look like. In this case, it came back with Tom Cruise. I think it's probably because of our jaw and facial structure probably not so much the fact that i shaved my head and he doesn't so it's close enough and obviously if you were doing something else if you were training taylor swift you'd say taylor swift woman you do whatever it is and then the type of object that it is so if it's a person place or thing and then last but certainly not least you'll go ahead and go down to upload images then just go to the directory where you've saved all of your training images in this case i've got a bunch of selfies of myself so I'm just gonna grab six or seven of those. Once those images are uploaded, you'll see them right down here below where it says upload training files and you'll see each of the file names. From here, we are actually ready. We can just click on start training. It's gonna come up with this warning message. Don't get freaked out. It says auto train's a paid offering and you'll be charged for this action. You won't, so don't worry about it. You can ignore this message if you're running auto train on a local hardware. Technically speaking, this is local hardware because it's running on Google Colab. So you're not going to get charged for this. Click on yes, I'm sure. That's going to start the training. You'll get a message here that says success. In my case, I got an error just because I'm already running the training in the background. From there, just hop back over to your Colab tab. You're going to see the progress down below. It's going to take a long time for this to run. Expect an hour to two hours, depending on the number of images that you uploaded. Go have a coffee, take a nap, relax, go for a run. And we'll come back when it's done. In this case, it took about an hour, 45 minutes for it to finish, but it's all done. So we're going to click on this file icon over here on the left hand rail. We're going to drop down these folders and one of them is going to contain a PyTorch LoRa weights dot safe tensor file. This is the actual LoRa file that you need in order to run this locally on one of your machines so you can actually use the LoRa. So find that safe tensor file, and then you're gonna click on the three dots and just click download. That's gonna download it to your downloads folder on your local computer. And from there, we're gonna be able to load this up into stable diffusion software on our local machine and generate some images. Once you've downloaded your safe tensors file, this is what you're gonna copy into whatever program you're gonna to use to run stable diffusion locally. Now, you could use Automatic 11.11. You can install that on your system. If you've already got it, that's great. If you don't, I've got on my Patreon page, I've got a one-click installer. You can use that. Otherwise, you can use something like Focus or Invoke AI. For this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use Focus. So I'm gonna to go to my Focus directory. 
going to go to models and then I'm going to go to go to Laura's. And if you're using automatic 1111, it's the same thing. You go to the root directory, models, Laura's. Same for invoke as well. So once you've already dropped this down into the Laura's folder, you can start the program. So we'll go back to the root directory, run the run.bat. The reason I like focus so much is because it's really easy to use. It kind of abstracts away a lot of the difficult pieces of running stable diffusion locally, but you can still do some advanced things with it. This is the UI for focus and it's really basic. You can see here, you just have this prompt where you enter in your keyword text. You've got this advanced tab and generate. We're gonna click on advanced for now. We're gonna change it just a couple of settings. We're gonna go 1024 by 1024. This is where you can set your resolution for the images. We're gonna keep the number of images set to two. That's how many it'll generate from a single prompt. Then we're gonna select quality just so it makes a little bit higher quality pictures. So this is gonna have a larger number of steps for each picture. Steps are essentially the iterations, the number of times that it iterates over a single image. And so the higher the steps, to a point, the better the quality of the image. And then we're gonna jump over here at the top, we're gonna go to model, and we're gonna make sure that the base model is SDXL, base 1.0. Then we're gonna select our LoRa. Your LoRa is probably named PyTorch LoRa Weights Safe Tensors. You can rename that to something else. In fact, I would rename it to your trigger word or your keyword that you had set up when you initially trained this. And then you're gonna set the weight to about one. It doesn't have to be exactly one, but somewhere real close to one. 0.97 is fine. Then in the prompt box, we're gonna type our keyword phrase. So I'm gonna say Tom Cruise man, and you're gonna type just whatever you had set up. We'll just go ahead and generate a couple of test images. And here we have our first two stable diffusion images. These came out great. They actually look really high quality. One of the really cool things I like about focus is again, it makes things really easy. So we can go over to the style tab and then you can just select some of these other drop downs. These are sort of different styles that you can apply to your prompt. So in the background, it's going to add additional keywords and phrases to your prompt but you don't have to think about it. You just kind of click on these buttons and you're good to go. So we'll add this heroic fantasy one and we'll go ahead and click generate again. And you'll notice these two images didn't come out much different from the first ones. They still have a really realistic look to them. So we'll go over to the model and I'm actually gonna drop the weight down to let's say 0.84 on my LoRa. This is basically how much the prompt is going to adhere to the LoRa and sort of guide the final image to it. And sometimes having it too high or too close to one is going to override any of the kind of filters that you end up setting for this. So we're gonna keep the style on Heroic Fantasy, drop that down, and then we'll generate again and see if that gives us a little bit different image. There we go. I love the way these came out, especially this first one. These are actually some of the settings I use for my YouTube thumbnail. So this is actually a really good photo. I'm actually going to save this one. Might use that later. Uh, you can come in and try some of these other styles. Like let's try something a little wackier. We'll try a Fortnite art style. Click generate once that's selected. I know those are a little wacky. I wouldn't call that Fortnite style. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the advanced tab. We'll jump the guidance scale up from the four that it was to six. This is going to make it a little bit more vivid and artistic. And then in the model, we're going to drop the weight for the Laura down to 0.8. We'll generate again. That second one's a little bit more Fortnite-esque but you'll notice if you look at the face, it's looking a little bit more like Tom Cruise and a little bit less like me. So let's go back to that models tab. We'll bump that back up to say nine, three, go to the style. And I'm going to turn off some of these other styles, the focus V2 enhance and sharp. And we're just going to leave on the Fortnite style. All right. I got to say we nailed it that time. The backgrounds, the colors, the aesthetic, everything looks pretty spot on for Fortnite. <laughs> Really cool, and if you'll notice, we didn't change our prompt at all. So you can get these drastically varied and different art styles, but you don't have to really mess around with your prompt. Let's try a couple more just for fun of it. Go ahead and do futuristic cybernetic robot. These are turning out awesome, and this is kind of way too much fun, so let's do a couple more. Basquiat, one of my favorite artists. Let's do a Basquiat version of me. All right, interesting. It's like Jean-Michel Basquiat and me are sort of distant cousins maybe at best. Interesting to say the least. Let's try this cyberpunk. This one's awesome. I look like I'm straight out of Night City, Cyberpunk 2077. Now, the other thing you can do here is you don't just have to select one. You could say, for example, Heroic Fantasy and Cyberpunk. Maybe you want to throw in, I don't know, Neon Punk. We'll get a little bit of neon additions to this. Well, you can mix and match. Doesn't really matter. You can do Zelda. You can do anime. A lot of really cool stuff here. And you can already see how it's sort of blending these different styles together. You're getting that 
cyberpunk look, but now it's got a bunch of neon lights, which pretty cyberpunk-esque. Then it's getting that kind of heroic fantasy look that we had earlier, which sort of smooths over some of the fine details. I really like it. I apply that to a lot of my images. I love the way these came out. It's really cool that you can play around with these different art styles and aesthetics and come up with completely new stuff without kind of having to be a prompt master. So again, check this out. And if you happen to be one of my Patreon subscribers, I post a lot of prompts like this all the time that have different art styles. Some of these are trained specifically on my Laura. So you can see here, you can do a bunch of different selfie poses. I've got a whole bunch of different art styles. This one in particular is one of my favorites. It shows you how to create that alien ripping off its mask, which happens to be your face. So I show you how to do a lot of those different prompts in here. There'll be a link down in the description if you decide you want to join and take a look at those. I'm always posting new and interesting content. And I think that just about wraps things up for today. Let me know some of the cool things that you end up creating down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Otherwise, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. We'll see you next time. Thank you all so much. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town. Break it down, AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let you down. Tech AI, earning the renown.